Hello and welcome to part 10 of my Let's Play series of videos for Dwarf Fortress. I'm Sippy Cup. So, I've been actually getting a lot of feedback from people on the official forums, the Bay 12 Games slash Dwarf Fortress forums, um, as well as some other places uh, that's been really helpful and uh, pointing me in the right direction as far as making sure I don't completely mislead people with these videos. So, one really important thing uh, that was pointed out to me that I should tell you about right away is skills and labors. So if you recall, I believe it was in video 3, part 3, um, we assigned skill points to our dwarfs. Now, it's very important to note that an, a completely untrained dwarf can perform any of those labors uh, if they have the labor enabled. And what the skill points affect is the speed and uh, skill with which dwarves perform the actions that you assign to them, which are called labors. So to kind of show you what I mean, I'm going to show you how you set labors in the game itself and how you set labors in Dwarf Therapist, an exceptional utility that comes with this pack. So the way that you see what labors a dwarf has enabled within the game uh, is to select the dwarf. And there's two ways to do this. You can press uh, V to view these units here and you can come over and bring your cursor near the dwarf now to see the labors menu you have to pe press P right here for preferences and then press L right here for labor so here are the labors that this particular dwarf has enabled this is my herbalist so you can see um, I can use plus and minus to navigate this menu so farming and related if I press enter it will show me uh, in this family of skills that are farming uh, related what labors he has enabled. So I can see right now he has plant gathering enabled. Um, he also, that in, that's the only thing in the farming family that he seems to have enabled is plant gathering. He also has hauling skills enabled, so, or labors rather. I should be uh, consistent with what I call this. So uh, this means that, for instance, if I uh, make a bed at my carpenter uh, and I press B to build it somewhere, uh, really that refers to hauling. Uh, so he has furniture hauling enabled, so he can perform that action. Now, the other way to look at this is to go from the unit list. You can press U, and uh, I'll find my herbalist. So I'm going to scroll down here, and here he is, Udib Ledkod, my herbalist. I can press C to zoom to the creature right here, and then I get to the same place that I was before. So what is the implication of this? Uh, as I was saying before, you actually don't need to have any skill in something uh, in order to have your dwarf perform the action. They just need to have the labor enabled. This is really important, and I'm sorry for not stressing this before. So uh, let me give you a practical demonstration. I'm going to pause the video for a sec and set something up, and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here is a Dwarf Therapist, which I demoed a little bit in Part 0, the installation and utilities. So I want to build a trade depot, and I made a point of saying before that if you don't have somebody with the architecture skill, uh, you know, it can take years sometimes for a migrant to come with the architecture skill. Well, uh, that's just flat wrong. Um, architecture affects how fast you build something um, if you have the skill, right? So just as a kind of a practical experiment, what I'm going to do is I see here that um, of all of my dwarves, I have only one with the architecture labor enabled, and it's the guy that has the architecture skill that I chose at the beginning. I'm actually going to disable that by clicking on it. I'm going to give somebody else the architecture skill. So I'm going to find somebody that doesn't have a lot of labors enabled. So, in fact, oh, the children. Well, I don't think the children can do it. I'm going to take my carpenter. I'm going to make it so he's uh, not got the carpentry labor enabled for now. And I'm going to turn on the architecture labor. And I'm going to go up here and press Commit Pending Changes. So now you should see that if I go to build the Trade Depot, that this particular dwarf, Logum Nikatast will be the one that will go and build it. So let me pause for a second. We'll see if that's right. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to build a trade depot. Um, and we'll cover a trade a little bit later, but just uh, this is a good example because it's a building that I know takes architecture skill. 
um, also known as building construction in the game. Okay, so I'm going to go B for for build, and then I'm going to press uh, capital D for trade depot. So this is why I left this 5x5 five five area here. As I mentioned before, I'm going to put the trade depot inside this corridor. So I'm going to build it. I'm going to choose what I want to make it out of. Um, some some things take more than one uh, piece of material to make. So you can see here that it takes three of whatever construction material you use. So you can either press enter three times when you have it selected, or you can make it out of mixed materials, I think, even. Um, if you want to make it all out of one thing and there's a lot of materials required, say uh, if you build a wall, for instance, you can just hold down shift and press enter on the material you want to use. Okay, anyway, so let me unpause the game and now we should see that in very short order the guy who was a carpenter, the dwarf who was a carpenter, should come and build this trade depot. Should haul up some obsidian. Let's real quick check and see what he's doing. His name was Logam Nikatast. If I can find him here. Sure, there he is. Okay, he's eating right now, so I'm gonna pause until he's done eating. Hey, so uh, there it is. Logam Nikatast, my carpenter. You can see his little yellow outfit and his saw has started hauling up the obsidian. And just to prove it, um, I pressed V to view units, and now you can see it's this guy, Logam Nikatast. And sure enough, if I look at his labor menu in-game, I can come down here to other jobs and see that he has the architecture skill enabled. So, uh, you know, that's proof for you. Uh, you don't need to have skill points to perform an action, but it does affect, again, the speed with which you perform labors, as well as uh, quality in some cases when it comes to, for instance, crafting, uh, you know, masonry, carpentry, etc. So I'll go ahead and pause the game while this guy uh, builds this depot, or pause the video. Right. Okay, so he's taking a break or something. Uh, another thing that I wanted to point out to you real quick is, uh, before I had mentioned that uh, there's all these remains sitting around, you can see all of these kind of purple skull-looking things that right now are basically just littering the terrain. Um, normally I do this earlier, and I just uh, forgot, <laughs> basically, but there is a special t stockpile which is specifically for disposing of waste like this. It's a refuse stockpile or a garbage stockpile, you might want to call it. So uh, the way to build one is simply to press P for stockpile and you're going to see right there R, refuse. So you typically want to make these outside of your fortress. The reason is that uh, certain items can rot and create what's called miasma. Miasma is a toxic purple cloud of, let's say, uh, Dwarf Fortress's version of bad germs. Um, it's bad for your dwarfs to be exposed to it. It'll give them unhappy thoughts and make them sick. So you don't want things to rot inside your fortress. That's just bad. So now that I've got this set there, um, any dwarves that have the refuse hauling skill enabled should theoretically start grabbing refuse and hauling them out to the refuse pile. And sure enough, there they go. So this thing is going to start to fill up with all of the remains of animals and things that have been left inside my fortress. Okay, the next thing that I want to cover is a really quick introduction to Dwarven Psychology. Dwarven Psychology, uh, what I mean by that is how happy your dwarves are and kind of what they think about their environment. So the way to see uh, what dwarves are thinking and what their preferences are is again to press V to come over to them. Um, so this guy is uh, Othel Rhyme Tongs. He is uh, my doctor, I believe. Um, you can go, you can press uh, Z. It will take you to this screen. And you can press Enter to see his thoughts and preferences. So this will tell you a lot about um, the dwarf. Some of it is only only really interesting from uh, kind of a role-playing perspective, you know, his physical attributes, um, you know, what his hair and nose and beard and everything looks like, but some of them can give you really good insight into how the dwarves feel about their surroundings. So it says, uh, this guy's been quite content lately, he's complained of the lack of a well lately, and he's been caught in the rain, and he's satisfied at work. So he's been caught in the rain, so he's been uh, assigned to do work outside while it's raining, um, they don't 
they don't like that too much, but I don't think that's a huge deal. Um, content is actually not great. Content is only kind of, you know, how are you feeling? Well, I'm, I'm okay, I'm content. Well, we want them to be happy. Happy is good. Um, there is a concept of a tantrum spiral, which is the bane of many Dwarf Fortress player. What is a tantrum spiral? A tantrum spiral occurs when a dwarf becomes so unhappy that they just go berserk. And a lot of scary things can happen where uh, you get this negative feedback loop. So let's say, for instance, uh, somebody is drinking the same kind of booze all the time, they don't have their own bedroom, um, there's flies and vermin and things pestering them all the time, and then, to add insult to injury, a goblin kills their you know, child. Well, this dwarf will be so unhappy that they might just go berserk and start killing other dwarves. Or just being crazy. <laughs> if they start killing other dwarves, then this will cause them to tantrum or go berserk, uh, kill other dwarves, friends and family, and then that those other dwarves will go berserk. That's what's referred to as a tantrum spiral and it can be a game ender for you. So uh, the way to avoid that is to keep your dwarves happy and as we go on I'll try to make sure to point out things that you can do to make your dwarves happy but really a lot of it is just common sense. You know the kinds of things that would make you happy in real life uh, make your dwarves happy. You know everybody wants to live in a nice house, everybody wants to eat good food, they don't want their friends and family to be mercilessly slaughtered by goblin invaders, things like that. So, uh, common sense is a good rule of thumb for Dwarven psychology. While we're on the topic of Dwarven psychology, it just occurred to me that uh, there's kind of a glaring oversight here. Um, my, my fortress is missing a very important feature. Uh, can you guess what it is? Well, if not, I'll tell you. I don't have a still. I don't have uh, anywhere in the fortress where alcohol is being produced. That's, that's going to be a problem uh, if I run out of alcohol. Dwarves, oh, this is he here. Here, I've already run out of alcohol. So, hopefully, uh, if you're watching this, uh, you haven't uh, followed my terrible example, and let your dwarves get so sober. <laughs> so, um, how do we build a still? Pretty quickly and easily. Uh, you're gonna press B for build, W for workshop, and L for still. I'm gonna take this still. I'm gonna put it right by my food stockpile because uh, drinks are brewed from. Uh, the vegetables that uh, mushrooms and things that you're growing in your farm. So I'm going to go ahead and build this thing out of alunite. I'm going to pause while this thing builds and then I'm going to show you how to build uh, uh, brew drink. Alright, here's my still. I'm going to go ahead and pause the game and show you how to brew drinks. Uh, you're going to press Q. You're going to bring your cursor over by the still. Add a new task. B to brew a drink. It's that simple. Um, there's different kinds of drinks that you can brew based on what kind of plants you have available. I've actually um, kind of done myself a disservice by making only one kind of field that has been set up to grow the same kinds of things all the time. Um, what you might want to do is actually have a couple different fields growing different kinds of vegetables so that when you're brewing drinks you have a variety. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, set another one up right now. So uh, again, the way to build that is to press B for build, P for plot. You're going to use your U key to make it taller, and you're going to use your K key to make it wider. I'm going to build that right there. I'm going to use Q to uh, go over the farm. Well, actually, I've got to wait for it to be built, so let me pause for a Oh yeah, by the way, I can't overstate how important it is to have a lot of alcohol in your fort. So to that end, um, I just got the caravan to arrive. Awesome. So to that end, uh, I just want to show you, uh, I'm going to go back to my fort here if I can find it. I've actually queued up uh, a whole bunch of um, drinks here at the still before I think I only chose one to get built, so I made a bunch. Okay, and so I just got a trade caravan coming. This is pretty uh, good timing. I guess the next video will be your introduction to trade. So we'll talk to you then.